Lesson 1, Creo Parametric Overview. Make sure that you understand that the lectures that are provided here will give a little bit of new information and alternate ways of doing things. When working in the book, make sure you follow the steps exactly. If you look at the first lesson, there's some information and objectives on the first page, and on the second page, <clears throat> it says steps. Wherever you see the word steps, that's where you're to begin the project. And all the steps are inside of a box. So here it says open Creo parametric using a shortcut or windows, etc. So this is where we're going to start, and I'll go back and forth and show pieces of the book as we go. <clears throat> so we're going to start a new project, and this one is going to be going to be called the PIN. And I like to put my initials next to the name just so that I know in the database that I modeled that one because sometimes I transfer projects over. There's a part, there's the type, and the subtype is a solid. So click OK, or you can press your middle mouse button, either one. Now here we have our datum planes, and we're going to work directly on the model today. And we're not going to go into a lot of detail except for using the commands that we want to to accomplish this overview process. One of the things you'll notice here is we have datum planes and we have a coordinate system, but the datum planes don't have any identifier on them. You can see by clicking on the model tree on the left-hand side that the front datum plane will highlight. So let's go over to our view tab on the top ribbon and let's turn on all of our datum tags so that we can see the top, front, and right. We're going to start with a protrusion. The model tree will show us as we model each feature in order. Parent, feature, child, parent, child, parent, child, as we build the model up. So we can either pre-select a sketch on an item, in this case datum plane, or we can give the command first Go to the Model tab and select Extrude as the first command that we're going to do. We're going to create an Extrude feature. Now, if we go to our Placement tab, we can define where we're going to sketch. Many of these commands are also available if you click on your right mouse button. You can see this is a quicker way to get to it, define internal sketch. This area in here where it says Sketch Plane <clears throat> then plane, this is the active area. If we were down here, this would be active. This is the active. It's looking for the plane to sketch on. So we're going to select the front datum, and this arrow shows the direction of viewing. In the book, it may say yellow because they actually changed the color after they released the software for the second time. So we're going to click on sketch, or you can click your middle mouse button, either one. And we have our two references here. Everything is going to be going back to these references. If we go up to the ribbon and pick on Sketch View, it'll turn the model, and we can see it in 2D. In this case, though, in the book, it does say let's stick with the standard orientation, which is triometric in this case. So right mouse button, circle, <clears throat> or you can go up here to the ribbon and click on the circle command. Circle. Click the center, expand out. It doesn't make any difference how big you make this. Left mouse button, middle mouse button. Now it'll show you the dimension. It's 200 inches. So you can actually drag this up and down. Or in our case, you can just double click on the size here, the dimension, type in 1 and hit enter. No need to type in 1.00. <clears throat> now we can go up to the ribbon and click OK, or we can right mouse button OK, either one. Now this, if I zoom out with my rolling my middle mouse button, you'll see it's 200 and some inches. It's obviously very big. I can drag that in if I want. I can zoom in by rolling. And again, I can adjust it. And easiest, probably the easiest way is to just type in the size you want up here in the dashboard. So we're going to have 5 inches. Hit enter. You can see the 5 changed here. Could have typed it in right in this location. And check to finish the command. Now, it looks odd. What we have to do here is we have to understand that it, for some reason, it zoomed in. So we're going to go and 
refit and you'll see the correct size. If you double click, if you click out here first with your right uh, left mouse button and you double click on the feature, you'll see the dimensions come up. If you made an incorrect size, you just double click here and change it at this point. Now, what we want to do is make sure all of our three parts that we're going to model in the very beginning are different colors. So click on the View tab, the Appearance Gallery, and we can select any color that we want. It's really not that important. I'll pick this one here. You can pick whichever one you like. And it puts a little paintbrush on there. We're going to go over and we're going to select the whole part. And if you notice way over here, it says select one or more items. So I came and I selected this. And I could click my middle mouse button or I'd come way over here and click OK. So we have our first model. <clears throat> now we'll add a little bit something different than in the book. Let's go in and uh, left click anywhere on the screen that deselects. Let's click on the first feature, move your cursor a little bit and click on the edge. Right mouse button, round edges. And let's double click on that and make it 0 0.0. Five. Very small. Now, hold down your control key and select the other side, the edge on the other side. And then middle mouse button or give a check. And there's our first <clears throat> component. Now, I want you to save yours. I'm not going to bother. You should be going, <clears throat> excuse me, directly into your working directory. Now, we didn't set that in the very beginning, so it's something we should really take a look at. File, Manage, System, Select Working Directory. And we should have done this in the very beginning, but many of you are in the school system and your directories will be allocated to you so you don't have to change the working directory. But normally that's what we would do when we start off a project. And the working directory for me is going to be lesson number one, which I've already set up. <clears throat> okay. And I can save this if I wanted to at this point. If I don't save it and I close the window, it's still in session and has not been lost, and I can reopen it. So you will save yours. Hit Enter or click OK. And then File, Close. That's our first part. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next part, <clears throat> New. And this one will be the plate. OK, or hit Enter, or middle mouse button. We're going to sketch on the front datum plane again. So let's pre-select it this time and see what happens. Click on Extrude. And we're going to go into the 2D version. So we're going to click on Sketch View here in the ribbon. And what we want to do is use a palette <coughs> feature, or sketch section. So we're going to go up here to the palette. It's going to take a second to load the palette, depending on your system. And we are going to go and select an octagon. Now double click on it. And when you move your cursor over to the graphics area, it's going to have a new type of pointer. Do not put it in the middle. Stick it up somewhere. It doesn't make any difference where. Just off the center. <clears throat> now, with your left mouse button, pick it up and drop it. Up here in the dashboard, we've got 48 times. That's how what scale is right now. We're going to make that 2. You can close the sketcher palette. And I like to always go into my standard orientation. Now, you can do this by going into the menu choices here, or you can go Control D, and it'll do the same thing. Right mouse button, OK, or come up and give a check. And I would zoom all. Here's my section, and we have one dimension. You can take that dimension and move it off the section if you wish. And come up and click OK. Now we have this extruded out. If we look at our dimensions over here in the model, we see that it's two inches. So in the dashboard up here, type two and enter. 
check to complete it. And let's go into the View tab again and click on Appearance Gallery and change this color also. <clears throat> I think we'll. I'm going to go with a gold here. And I'm going to then go back into my Appearance Gallery, right mouse button, I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Close. So you pick on the swatch of color. Here's the highlight. If you want to change the highlight into something different, you can also do that. Close. We have our new color. Now let's go up and click on our shading. We'll go shading with edges. We can see it a little bit more clearly. Now the next feature, click on your model tab, is going to be a hole. It's going to run down the center of this. So let's select the hole to first. <clears throat> click on this front area here. Do not select a datum plane. Just come down here and pick the, the frontal portion or surface. I didn't say front datum plane. I said front area here. And it will put your preview of the hole there. And if you go up to the placement tab in the dashboard, you'll see that the placement has been taken care of. But it needs references. You either have to click here to start working or right mouse button and select offset reference collector. <clears throat> After you do that, you can actually take these little green drag handles and drag them to wherever you want the measurement to come from. So for instance, one of them we want to have from the right datum and the other one we want to have go over to the <clears throat> top datum. I'm going to close the placement here. Oh, before I do, you can see it says offset, offset. <clears throat> we actually want to go in and we want to change this to a line. So click on the word offset, drop down a line. Now this will put it in the very middle. The next thing we want to do is we want to go up to the dashboard and we want to make this a drill through all. And while we're here, we can change our diameter size to one. Close the placement. Now we could have just simply come and picked our right and our top over here rather than dragging the green arrow the green drag handle. So check and we have our model. Now let's add a little bit extra here. Click anywhere on the screen and go control D to reposition it. So we're going to select the first, uh, the last, well, actually the first feature and then move your cursor a little bit and pick the edge. It'll highlight. Hold down your control key and move your pointer until it highlights the edge on the back. You can press your middle mouse button down and rotate it, then hold your control key down and select it. Now, this does not have a right mouse button selection. We're going to come up here and we're going to pick on our chamfer command. And you notice it goes to 0 0.05. Middle mouse button or give a check and put it in standard orientation. Save your part. So the second part has been completed. The plate. Make sure you save it. So file, close after it's been saved. And we're going to new, do a new one. And this one is going to be an assembly. So we're going to put those two pieces together. New. Make sure you click assembly. And you can name this as per the book. And now we have the same type of datum planes, but they say ASM in front of them. And the coordinate system says ASM. So we're going to bring in our first component. So we're going to click on Assemble. And in this case, mine is in session. You're going to be using the pin and the plate. Mine is in session. I didn't save it. And we're going to bring in the plate as the first component. You can double click on it if you wish. Now, 
this is a 3D dragger here, and we don't have to really worry about it. It's one simple part going into an assembly. So right mouse button, default constraint. This will put coordinate system to coordinate system. And when you click on check, you can see it says fully constrained here. Click on check. Now we've got the first component. And over in the model tree here, let's expand this out a little bit. Let's go to the tree filters. And let's turn everything on. And you'll be able to see more in the model tree this way. And you'll also see, if you want to, the features of the part. You expand it up. So we're going to assemble the next component, which is the pin. And we can drag it around using this 3D dragger. But for our purposes right now, I want to make this very simple. So let's turn off the 3D dragger. And let's also turn off datum features, as many as we can. In this case, all of them are going to go away. We'll leave the spin center on. Now, simply go and select the surface of the pin and the surface, not the edge, the surface of the hole. Now, pick the front face of the plate and the front face of the pin. Put your cursor right over the top of that little square that says coincident, right mouse button. And you can see these are all the options at this point. We want to go up here and look at our placement tab. And we see that we've got coincident, coincident. And what we would really like to have here in the second one is something besides coincident. We'd like to have this a distance. And by doing that, we can then drag this out a little bit. Let's drag it to half an inch, quarter. Let's go to a quarter of an inch. If you can't drag it exactly, you can type up here in the dashboard. Check. And your assembly is complete. Now we can turn back on all those datum features so that we can see everything on your model. You can look over here and you can see the datum features which are part of the assembly and then the datum features which are part of the component, each component. And if you open this up, you'll see that the placement option shows. And that's because when we went into the model tree here, model filters, we said placement folder display. So save this, click on save, or you can go control S. I'll do control S. I'm not going to save mine because I end up having too many versions of the same thing. You need to save yours though. Next, we're going to do a drawing. So let's file and close. Click on new. Drawing for the very first time. Use a default template. OK. And we're going to click on C size. OK. Should display three views. And we want to actually shut off all those datum features now. If nothing happens on your screen, just roll your middle mouse button or repaint. So the only thing we see is our three views. Let's add a new view. Right mouse button, insert general view. We could also get that from the dashboard up here. Ribbon. OK, and then click a position for it. Now it's following the environment. Click OK. So it brought it in as shading. And what that means, if you go to your flute view tab, your display tab was set for shading with edges. So that's why you got this particular style here. We'll leave it. So right mouse button. Click anywhere on the screen, right mouse button. and see what the options are. I want you to go down to the size here and double click on it. And there's another way to get to that. If you are on the layout tab up here, right mouse button, these give you different things as per the, 
tab that you've got selected. We want to be on the Layout tab, right mouse button, Sheet Setup, or double click on the Size C on the bottom of the graphics area. Click inside where it says C, drop down, browse, and double click on the C size. These are ASME standard sizes. You can preview it. OK. And right mouse button. Again, you're in the layout tab, but this is here lock view movement. We don't want to lock the views. If we lock the views, we can't move them. So unlock the view and move them around as per the drawing needs. <clears throat> this is an assembly here. Let's click on annotate and show model annotations. And let's select um, the top view. And you'll see there's one dimension for the assembly. So click on that. And then go over to the axes and datums here the, and select both of those. And also select the front view and the side view. I think you're going to have to hold down your control key to do that. So make sure all three are selected. Get all the center lines, OK. And if you want to adjust a center line, you just click on it and drag it to the position that you want. So that's an assembly drawing. Only one dimension is showing. So save that. I'm not going to save it, but I'm going to close it. By the way, you can also go view, close. Now, new again. We've got to be careful here. We're going to go to the drawing. I should have had you change that name to assembly the before. This one is going to be the plate. So it's the plate drawing. Now be careful. The model that's showing here is the assembly. We want to browse, and we want to select your plate. I'm going to go in session because my plate has a different name here. And if I want to see this, I can click on preview. And my preview is not working. I'm going to go to my working directory. So in the working directory, it, it shows. But in session, it's not showing. So I'm going to click on plate for myself. Yours, just take out your plate from your working directory. Now you'll see this is the correct thing. If you forget to do this, you'll have another assembly drawing. C size is OK. Right mouse button, sheet setup. Let's go in there and select a different size. Um, we can try B size. OK. We don't really need a top view, so click on the view. You can hit your delete key or right mouse button, delete, either one. And since the lock view movement has been deselected, we can move our model around. Now, if it's not big enough, we can double click down here also, and we can go to a different size. So let's go to a C size. And sheet setup. Browse and double click on C. It's like we did before. This is the parent view, so you can move it around. The other one will follow it. And if we want a pictorial view, right mouse button, insert general view, OK. Click where you want it to go. OK. If you want to change the display of that view, you just double click on it view display and we can choose no hidden and the tangent edges we can click on none apply and we have a nice little pictorial view now let's zoom all refit click on the annotate tab show model annotations and actually let's select both views Hold your control key down. And we want all those dimensions to show. And I want to make sure we have all of the
Center line showing also. Center lines didn't show here, so let's try that one again. So you have your center lines. Now, click on your dimension, move it off the face of the drawing, and you can adjust your center lines if you wish. The main thing we want to look at here is this dimension two. This is really a bad dimension for creating an octagon. We need the dimension across the flats. So let's click on dimension here, new references, or right mouse button, dimension, new references. Select the bottom and the top, middle mouse button. And this dimension, if you double click on it, it's going to come up with the dimension properties. But the nominal value is not available to change. That's because it's a driven dimension, not a driving dimension. If I double click on the, the two here, you'll see that I can actually change this to a different size. So what we have is a situation where we want to go back to the model and change the dimensioning scheme. So click on the model tree where it says plate, open, click on your first feature, right mouse button, edit definition, right mouse button, edit internal sketch, go to the sketch view, and let's put in a new dimension right mouse button, dimension. All these commands can be found up here also. And we want to go from the top to the bottom or bottom to the top. And it's going to say, hey, you've got too many dimensions. You can turn this other one into a reference, but you can't have all these dimensions and all these constraints. You don't need them. Pro Engineer, I'm sorry, Creo will not allow you to do that. I will at times say board pro engineer since it was from 1989 until 2011. That was the name of the software. So we're going to delete 2.0 and leave this one. But let's double click on here and let's make this five. Enter. Right mouse button OK. I like to turn it, either control D or use your standard orientation check and if you double click on the part you'll see that the dimension shows up so let's click on view and go to windows and select the drawing now you'll notice that the dimension disappeared for the two let's double click on the five it still is not available to change now why would that be well it was created it wasn't displayed so click on your front view show model annotations, click on your dimension, and select the five. Did one dimension. Okay. Now you might say, well, this is these are identical. But if you double click on this one here, you will see I think I'm getting this underneath. Let's move one to one side, one to the other so it's out of the way. So this one is the one that's driven. This one is available to change. So let's change that to uh, 4.5. Okay. And let's come over to this side here and delete it. Let's see what's happening. go to view, go over to our windows here, and the plate, click on the model tab, and let's regenerate. View, windows, go back to your drawing. So it updated it. Let's go back to your layer tab, layout tab. And now you have the correct dimension here. If you want to go back to five, we can click on that. Five, and you really don't have to go into this dialog. You could click slowly and then double click. Click once, slowly, and then double click. 
and change it here. And let's go to sketch. Let's see if there's anything else we can do on this one. Let's go to our part here and open it again. And go to the model and regenerate. go back to view, change windows again, and again you can clean up the drawing if you wish, but this is pretty much uh, what we want to cover. We did an assembly made up of two parts that we modeled, and then we did a drawing of the assembly and a drawing of the part. This, this concludes lesson one.